By the way, let's just segue into that. Obviously, sure. all the talk shows pretty much are obsessively about the Carmine Corp topic because they are this year's XL or Vitality at the end of last year. These teams that on paper, it just, I mean, the joke is, I'd even say the same thing about this lineup now. Every time you look on the gamepedia, your brain just can't compute that they can be last, that they've lost every game. It's the same with Vitality, it's the same with XL. Even if, you know, then you learn about like the synergy problems here or maybe this player has comms. It doesn't matter. You keep looking at the list and you're like, you can't, how could they be this bad? So give me your thoughts. And a lot of people have discussed this to death, but what's your angle? What's the, what's the Carmine Corp angle for you? Like, is the whole project a bust to you so far? Um, God, I mean, where do you start with this, right? Because there are multiple different issues. So I did some tier listing stuff before the uh, the split started, and I was pretty high on Carmine Core. Yeah. Maybe that's because I have, I've I've been a bit more involved with Carmine Core because I've cast three out of the last four Amir Masters finals. Well, so I I've do notice, Nymira, a lot of the people who just said they were trash out the gate were just people who never watched ARL. So yeah. look, I will admit they've obviously lost every game and looked bad. But like a lot of the people I know, if you actually watched the LFL at all, like there's a lot of reason yes. why people had high hopes for the players that are actually being flamed now, right? No, there were definitely points in time where um, I think it was spring of 22, something like that, when that was the reckless Calming Core roster. And that team yes. was, it was, it was not a great team. No, no. But the individuals were so good that they would, even though they'd all, they'd pretty much always give up first blood. That was the, the 113 thing where you just run into the enemy yep. jungle and die. But every single lane would be ahead 30 CS and they get to two items and they win anyway because they were just better players. It was quite clear that many of the Carmen Core rosters were too good for the LFL, but they were sticking around and not being in the LEC, probably because they didn't want to be lower end LEC. Cabochard has obviously said on Instagram. It was also implied, by the way, and this I think makes sense. It was maybe even implied because you know the stories have been not just from this last year when they did buy, but actually every time there was a slot available, the story always was maybe Carmen Corp buys it. Yeah. I even get the sense it was implied, I would guess primarily to Sakin and Cabo, of like maybe if you stay, we get an LEC spot anyway in like two years, but you're with us if you know what I mean. There was, I almost got the sense that, like you say, that they these guys could have been promoted or gone to teams mm. before they chose to stay in the LFL. Like, oh, Kavishaw actively, actively, yeah. actively chose to not be in the yes. LEC. He cho- and I think for their brand, that has been the right choice. You know, yeah. if they'd spent like a crap year on a failing roster in yes. the LEC, you wouldn't really care about them. They have a huge fan base behind them now. Yes. And in regards to, I think actually, it might have even been Targamus's contracts said basically, if we promote and you're still on the roster, you're coming to LEC. I think oh, there was right. something in one of the contracts. Right. I can't... I can't remember where I heard that from, but it's definitely been mentioned plausible. before. Um, and I know the surprising. org was very high on him and wanted him in when he was available, etc. Yeah. They thought that they would actually... The funny thing is, it, it, obviously now everyone's going to flame him and say shit again, but the joke was, I actually heard behind the scenes they, that what they predicted the LFL was what they thought. They said, if we get this guy, I tell you, we'll turn him around, it'll be good again. And he was. He actually was good again. Yeah, and then that that's what makes this LEC um, showing from Kami Core so just disastrous for them, because... I mean, it's going wrong on every possible level. Most of the lanes are failing very early into the game, and there are different reasons for that, but some of it is individual. As soon as they get to their item breakpoints, they're not on the same page. They don't even play for... Um, I, I made a tweet about this as well, where I was just... Every time you look to late game Calming Core, they do nothing. Like, there's no Hail Mary. Even though, I mean... I, you can say that you can look at the players which are behind in the game and say, oh, it's the problem that they're in that position. But then you have to look to the players which are still kind of hanging on. You know, Saken's not been blown out in every laning phase, but he's not making the plays to win the game. And then it, it kind of falls down to players like Bo to be the one player who's going in and trying to initiate things on on their terms. And because you're so far behind, it's a little bit more... I don't even want to call them errors. I'd like to put forced errors on there, like in tennis, right? Where you've been forced into a bad enough position that you're unlikely to make a good play. Um, so yeah, I mean, across the board, it's, it's really not working out well. And this is one of the big problems I have with this whole project is that when you bring in a guy like Yamato Cannon to coach, one of his strengths historically is getting players on the same page very early sure. in a split. When you've got, you know, very different players, you can still make that function. Maybe after a while, the roster plateaus. I think that's a natural evolution of many rosters, but for them to fail right out of the gate and arguably look like they haven't, you know, particularly improved either. That's a big issue, um, and there are some very fundamental things going wrong. I think the game against Mad Koi, um, individual laning phase from Targamus and then from Cabochard were un- unacceptable for the draft that they had. I think that there are times where seiken has been on you know, the Nico or the Azir, and he's not made the game-winning plays, which he potentially was in a position to do so. That's unacceptable in a way, too. I think you can give... You know, some degree of freedom to or forgiveness to upset for, you know, problem is if you're playing laning champions with someone who's so struggling in lane like Targamus, well, what do you expect him to do? Yes, he's made mistakes too, don't oh, get me yes. wrong. He hasn't been perfect, but I still think like 
he's not the first person in my targeted sites, oh. you know. And he lo- and, and, and in some of these games, he rightfully looks mentally boomed, mate. Like I said, yeah, for sure. you know, you're like, just in the scenario where it doesn't matter. <laughs> Do you remember that uh, there was that point where he walks into Mirwin's Akali top lane? He misses like an auto, yeah. like Mirwin misses like two or three abilities, still kills him and upsets just like, well, I shouldn't have walked in there, should I? And then of course there's Bo as well, which has been, uh, Bo's been under the under fire from a lot of the Carmen Core fans for just being the scapegoat really at this point. I actually think he's been making the, the, the forced errors, like I've said before. So this team... There is no easy fix. Their laning phase looks crap. Their team fighting doesn't look awesome too. They had, you know, one or two okay moments versus G2, but, you know, now looking at G2, there's some question marks about that roster too at this point in the split. But Kami Core, I, I don't know who, what changes you make. I don't know who you put in charge of that. It is an utterly burning ship. It's funny because obviously because they've lost every game and beyond the mid game of each game, they just... Don't, like you say, everything goes wrong. Like nothing goes right, basically. And then and they can lose any position, any comp, any champ. There's another thing, by the way. Here's where you know if you're a real casual. If you think every single game, your Mato just drafted the worst draft, you just don't know the fucking game. Like some of those drafts at the end looked like he's already doing the cynical band-aids, guys. He's trying to give them like the most basic, like there's an ABC comp and the joke is they're fucking those up too and not yeah. playing them out to the but conditions. Th- the biggest one for that is, again, like I know I'm referencing this a lot, but the, the Mad Lions Koi game, the draft which Kami Core had, you know, that is the draft which T1 would win Worlds yes. with. And it is a very similar meta. You have the Ash Caitlin bot lane, which is all about destruction level one. You roll through the bot side of the map and then then you the, the enemy loses control of either bot lane turret and waves, so they lose too much farm, or the bot side enemy jungle and their jungler falls out of the game. What happens there is there's just very basic stuff going wrong where um Upset and Targum stack on each other at level one. Seriously, go back and watch this if, if, if you if you want to see the proof of it. And it, they're playing against a Renati who has like a little missile thing which does damage and gives a shield. You should never have both people being hit by that at once. It's a small skill shot and you're both range champions. You oh, was this the one where them. like Targamus like sort of like, he's done this a few times. I think he did it against the center as well. He yeah. sometimes does this. He'll actually like get, his, he upset. gets his teammate by just standing next to them when there's like an on, yeah. a, a, like effect. He gets them yeah. fucking stunned too or wrecked. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Isn't it? So, so then you think, okay, so <laughs> The, the whole thing about Ash support is that you are balanced around having such a crushing advantage after using Hail of Blades and your passive and everything like that level one that you get to roll through a dominant laning phase. If you're already stacking to the point where actually you've lost 200 HP more in net sure. terms than you should have done, like, why are you playing this comp? And this is simple. We have seen this for like five, six months. It's what won Worlds. It's what's being played in Korea as well. It's being played absolutely everywhere. Um, if you can't play this, you have to go to something different. But if you're playing this style... Like, it's as simple as it gets. And then, obviously, Cabochard as well on the on the Jax as well just became a lost condition once Mirwin started getting ahead on the Akali as well. So, yeah, back, coming back to the point in regards to, you know, this isn't just bad drafts. There is a level of the players can't play the drafts even yes. if they are the pinnacle of the style that you're going for. And that is a whole different issue. They've yes. tried different drafts beyond that point, and that doesn't seem to have helped. So, like, it reminds me a bit of when, I think it was BDS 2022 is the grabs roster. And yeah, it was, yeah. I, yeah, like... Where I can't remember which split, it might have been summer or, or spring. Either way, but neither of those splits were great. Grabs did an interview, which I think is very telling about the coach's mindset at that point. Of course, Grabs, very well decorated coach. A lot of people have a very high opinion of him. You need to have something going well to build off of. You tell me what's going well with these Kami Core games. I don't yes. know what you put as a point for success. This last week, they tried to put Bo on stuff like Lilia and something which has a bit more um, damaging carries and stuff like that. That didn't work either. He was soloed out, and particularly in the Vitality game, which was super late game and weird, Bo basically had zero impact because every single engage was onto the Lilia. He could never play the game. So they've tried three or four different styles of compositions. Pretty much every lane has multiple champions tried at this point. I haven't seen much signs of success anywhere i really don't envy being in charge of this product i don't know why you start with this yeah i know what you mean on that one i mean what i would say is this the main problem is i i i'm basically top to bottom they've got issues but on the coaching one the reason i bring up the drafted angle is look i don't know if in the off season yamato specifically asked for certain players but beyond that if, if i'm assuming he's not the general manager at the end of the day guys the players have to play the game all he can do is coach yeah. them do the practices set up the draft they have to click the buttons after that and here's the problem i have is one like i said at the beginning about the names what's weird is actually if you notice a lot of the people who hate on Carmine cop not like analysts a lot of the fans are doing that thing where 
where they conflate two things. So understand, analysts are saying it's actually baffling how bad this team is. The hater goes, well, yeah, they're all shit, and I knew they'd be terrible. It's like, no, 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 no. That doesn't make sense. Like, that's not the, it's not the case, guys. Like, there's a reason why, by the way, people were hyped for this team. Like, I actually asked after this week, Naimir, a bunch of players from other teams and coaches, what was it like before the split? Like, when you were scrimming against this team, were they good? Were they legit? Were they bad like this? Did you think they, I'll tell you what, it's a totally mixed bag, Naimir. There are some people who thought maybe they wouldn't be that good, but even they, by the way, said in scrims they were better because they could play a bit looser and be like, Bo really could, by the way, 1v9 the games and just dominate from the beginning. Uh, then if there you was... watch the in-houses as well, the, like, sure. the in-houses which were streamed a lot and there were some really good performances from people like Bo too. Yes, and then other people, some of them actually just straight up said they were really good before the split and that in the scrims they were playing, this team was looking strong. Uh, like, this is, it's a mixed bag. So as a result, it can't just be, by the way, like everyone knew this team would be shit. No, it actually seems like it depends on who knew about the RLs, who knew about the split, if someone likes upset, if they like bore, whatever. But what I would say is this, my biggest problem is if I had to identify the two biggest problems, I actually think they're quite subtle because I've always thought the problem in league is the real person who gets the blame is either the person who makes the game losing play, which is very really, rarely the lose. It's just the one that decided yeah. the game. It's not really the one that set the whole game up. Or it's the person where they int and die a lot. But I've always thought that's just obvious if that person had a bad game because you can just see it. The two people I actually think are sort of sleeper getting away with it, ironically, because Bo upset and Yamato are drawing all the flack, it's fucking Sakin and Targarbus, the fucking golden boys of this like French speaking community. Because, like you say, the problem with Sakin is this I saw this guy play in the RLs for all those years in this team, and he did not play like this. I'm telling you guys, if you gave yeah, him a champion like Azir, he would carry the game. Now, it might be the case, like we we pointed out here, maybe our problem we'll find out is that they are actually sort of in no man's land. They're slightly too good for the RLs. Maybe they're just not quite good enough for LEC. That might end up being the case, but that is not what it looked like in the RLs, guys. He didn't do these things. Oh, yeah. So my problem with him isn't even the idea he's a bad player. It's like you said, mate, I would just describe it like this. He doesn't pull the trigger. He looks he looks like the most nervous player on that team because as we're saying, he's getting his champions. Sometimes he has the CS and he has the resources and he just, do, it, the key thing is, the joke is, Put it this way, I'll make an edgy joke that people in the community will know. It's like he's playing the Ultra Liga because he's just not using fucking abilities. Like he's just standing there, not doing the ultimate, not doing. You like that one, didn't you? I just slid it yeah. in there under the <laughs> under the wire on that one. The other guy is Targamas. Fix that right up. And the, the Targamas one is mainly because I'm with you on this time era. One thing I don't get is the first bandit I'd have for this guy is shrink your champion pool, mate. He's trying to pick like he's Carrier, but Carrier lands those Asha rolls, mate. Carrier doesn't stand there and get you Mushi stunned and CC'd as well. He understands I can truly support your tanker and get the fuck away from the guy. Like, he's making all these mistakes that, look, people are going to know I'm biased because I do think Upset is fantastically talented. Mate, I don't know how his mental is going to survive if it's like this. Like, uh, There's yeah. another thing, lastly, to say about upset. I'm not going to make it like he's playing awesome. By the way, he looks like he and some of these games has quit on the team too or knew that like, fuck it, I'm not going in again and trying to do damage. He's again. still the second Jumped best player on. on his team. He's still clearly one of the best factors in the team, one of the ones you'd build around. And I'll just throw this out there. If you want to compare him to other ADCs, look at the last sort of six or seven supports this guy has had. Mate, he has had some nightmare fuel supports. People who just like, that's like the worst split of their career. That's the last split of their career in LEC. He's had people where they were serial inters. Like, he's had some crazy ones. Go. The joke is even fucking Hillisang in this guy for a split. Hillisang, for fuck's sake. So uh, he has had some bad luck. But my problem is this. The last thing I'll say on this one, because like I say, this topic has been talked to death these last two weeks. We can go to the other teams. There's more there. But what I would ask you is this. Obviously, right now, there is no obvious answer. Yamato doesn't have the answer. No one knows how to fix it. If I asked you, Yaimira, if you could, like, coach this team, is there, like, a cynical approach you would try and take to at least get some wins or to turn it around? Is there, like, is there something you would emphasize, something you de-emphasize? Is there some, is there, what, what has been the best for them so far? Is there anything that you think has any ray of light? I think the best they looked was in a bit of the mid game versus G2. I yeah. think that was on, there was a point where Bo was on Vi. There was a, there was a very particular moment which I draw my eyes to, which was there was some really fun in team finding instincts happening right there. Where I think it was, um, it was a fight around bot side of river. You can see both solo laners coming in. You've got a cannon coming from the top side, LeBlanc coming from the bot side. And there was a pick just into the enemy jungle for G2. And then uh, Bo hops over the wall and he's threatening a Vi ult onto the Aphelios. And of course, the Aphelios this game has been very much not been getting too many of the resources. It's been about the side laners for G2. 
there's a really quick recognition there of their sideliners are coming. We've already threatened the Ophelos to step back, so he can't hit the other people. So Bo's already done enough threat. He peeled back and then managed to buy some more space. So the pincer became just actually a series of like a couple of separated fights where um, the solo laners of G2 couldn't get anything done. Exhaust goes onto the cannon. He doesn't get anything done. Ophelos is already out of the fight. Bo ults back over the wall, not onto the Ophelos, but pull himself back into position. So he's not caught out. And that means that um, Yike can't reset on the, on the Viego either. There are some moments like that where you think, actually, you know what there's some really good understanding of positioning some understanding from bow not going too deep and peeling back instead and kind of letting the enemy play into them which is what g2 have done obviously a lot of they, they tend to be the ones making proactive plays there were some moments like that i just don't know how you set that up again because this is, should be the kind of thing which can be replicable because people play into you and you can kind of end up peeling back their team fights have been very very inconsistent though so it's difficult really <coughs> i don't know because it's difficult. You're waiting for the team to play into you. I think that you want to take some emphasis off of early laning phase. I don't want to see that again. I think that you want to draw, put in bot lane and top lane as low volatility matchups as possible. I think we've seen enough of that from Cabochard and from Targumus in particular, and that hasn't worked for them. And I think what you want to do after that point is play for one item spikes and let bow play for the aggressive engages because around one item spikes on jungle, if you mess it up, you still have enough HP and the enemy doesn't have enough items to right. just completely one-shot you before like an AD carry or an Azir or something like that, just one-shots you on the way in. So I think that Kamikor need to just nail the early game down so there's there are matchups which aren't moving that much, play for the one-item spike and just hope that bow and, and Targamus can, can get to the point where they can get an engage on the one-item mark. That's about as good as it gets. But honestly, there is no clean answer. I feel like they could have done this in other games and they haven't. Yes. So I'm looking at this one specific game and saying, let's try and create that lightning in a bottle again without particularly anything, you know, yes. helpful there. I mean, obviously the other thing here is that you're assuming contractually it's very hard to sub someone out midway through the yes, first Yes, that's also of the implied year. politically as well, yeah. yeah. As far as I've heard, because the ERLs are still in the two sp split system between uh, spring and summer, it's unlikely to have good contract negotiations and good contract uh, mobility to get right. someone out of LEC and up from the ERLs. It's easier between after spring split because that does align with, um, right. with the ERLs. But it's very hard right now this year contractually to get players in and out after winter as opposed to last year where we actually did see some mobility. I don't know how and why, uh, how you pull the trigger contractually on this team. Because that's one of the other things too. You just hope that you can, I don't know, sub in. Maybe maybe someone like Trimby is available for targets. I don't dope, know whether they yeah. even fit. That'd, that'd be something right. I think that probably Targamus for me would be the first to go. This guy has really, really struggled. Um, yes. But assuming that that's not an option right now, then yeah, I think you've got to just try and remove volatility, wait for one item team fights where you've sometimes looked good. Because the saddest thing to me, I'd say, as a final note is, if I even think of the identities of the players, it's the opposite. It actually should make so much sense, this team. Imagine this team fight scenario, Nymera. I have Cabochard on a tank slash bruiser peeling. I have Sakan on his beloved Azir, ready to do his Sharima shuffle and with his sand soldiers. A ball goes balls deep onto the back line, while Upset just cleans everyone up. Like, I haven't included Targamas there, because actually he's done fucking nothing in the split. But the joke is, that's like, that, that even sounds like some fucking ridiculous band-aid yeah, for an I, LEC I, I team. team that good. wins, right? That wins games. <laughs> <laughs> what a world. Because the yeah. baddest thing I, I will say is this. this. The reason this reminds me way more of the Vitality fall apart last year than it did the XL Super Team is the XL Super Team looked bad at all stages of the game they, they wouldn't even be behind in most games this reminds me of Vitality because Vitality did the same thing they'd keep getting to the mid game where it's like you're either slightly ahead or a lane's got fed a bit or it's like an even scenario and then the stupid thing is like this you think well you've got all these big star players surely the team fight's where you're going to shine and that's the opposite the team fight is where you blow it every time and even like as you see lesser teams with lesser players but who have more coordination make you look silly and run circles around you and at the end the joke is you can't, this is the most alarming thing I'll just say as an emphatic point is I can't just pick one player I end up looking at almost every player and going look it might not be, um, you might not be first, but we all fucked up this game. Surely this is terrible. Like, that's the other thing. Normally in one of these teams, it's like you have one lanes per losing, right? Get rid of that guy or band-aid him. I, the, the idea they all fall apart in the mid game, that, that's really worrying. That makes, pretty sweet. I'd love to double down and say, fuck you guys. They'll come back. They'll get back. Right now I can't. I have to, they have to at least give me one game. They have to win, close one game for me. And then I can, I might start to invest belief because there's yeah, the other I, thing, mate. I don't care how good you are. If you can't close the game, 
You're never well, going to fucking win anything. Well, the Vitality game is the big one for that, right? Because <laughs> yeah. Vitality game was utterly winnable. It looked yes. like they were against the worst team in... Well, Vitality weird in that. But in that game, they looked like the second worst yeah, team yeah. in LEC. They were playing like that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, where do you pick this up? They had some sitter team fights. There was that one team fight where, you know, VTO teleports away from the rest of the team for some reason. No, they fight Vitality for some reason. Anyway. Yeah. And, and then, they, they, of course, they die because it's a late game. By the way, that's how was... bad... Here's how bad... I'll put the, I'll put the fucking real exclamation point. This is how bad guys... Can't I mean, Corpar. Hillisang tried to int that. <laughs> That's like he did his... The joke is, like, you would think he was win trade in the way he went in there, but it actually worked. That's how stupid Carmine Corp set up is at the moment. It worked to fight 4v5. <laughs> So, yeah, so I, you, you've had, you've had, you, and the thing is, I mean, I'm trying to think of their schedule now as well, because that, that's the last. Well, luckily, they have played a lot of the top teams, so they might have yeah. a slightly easier schedule. From, obviously, the problem is the three games left in there. But they've just given a game over to Vitality. You're, so the other two teams, which you're now realistically fighting against, are Rogue and Giant X, which, I mean, they play against Rogue next week. Um, Those are the most winnable games. Those are plausible. Yeah, they are. What else have they got that week? So they've got Rogue, they've got SK, and they've got BDS. So that's one game which I think is winnable. Maybe SK, if they, you catch them napping, they've had some weird moments. But like, that's still likely, I would say, at best, one, yes. maybe two wins. Which I mean, put it this way we'll get to them later. But even though I'm not the biggest BDS fan, I'd have to give them props. I can tell them some yeah. of the inside. I tell you what, mate, right now they would close the game. Like, they actually can macro. Yeah, sure. Like, you might not like the players, but they, they would win against fucking Kami Kot if they played today. So, unless something levels up, I'm with you. Mm. They might lose to B. They probably will lose to BDS. They might lose to SK. And then you have to... We're acting like well, you're definitely going to beat Rogue and the others. Maybe not. You can even lose to no, these I ones think, too. I think Rogue, their strength... I think their, their weakness is their passivity, but their strength is actually like in lane. Last oh, they have some and, strong and, players, and, and yeah. And Siegenda are really good. And, and where have Kami Corp been weak? Well, actually, early laning phase yes. hasn't been very good. If you are then... You know, my suggestion of like, oh, just lock down the early game, low volatility. I think you just lose versus Rogue about that because that's kind of... You know, they, they will win straight yes. through laning phase, right? So... This is looking just so unbelievably wrecked for them. I, I don't see the path through here. It's got to be like an absolute zero to a hundred. And I don't even think they have the players like on, you know, Vitality's had very inconsistent moments. They've had some very lows and very highs. I can't even count them to come exploding back because they've had the opportunities to do that already, sure. folks. And it hasn't shown itself. So for me, this split is a complete wash. To see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content? Well, subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't.